OK, so there is a space called uh, woke. OK, what does it mean? Why don't you guys help me? What does woke mean? Attentive? OK, what else? You know what's up. OK? So this is, uh, according to a uh, dictionary, it's an it's a improper word, but it says alert to center. Or you use this word, woke. Okay, so again, your alert. Yeah? Um, so it's this idea that you're awakened. Uh, you realize something that you haven't realized before. Of course, uh, most uh, people in society for um, like now thing right like maybe maybe there's something that you weren't aware of before but maybe you want something. okay you study something that you become literally awakened okay I don't know, have any of you guys ever had that experience before maybe you watched the documentary or maybe you watched the movie and you realize oh wow like the way I perceive the world is very, very different now. Now, like, even if you try to unsee it, I think, any of you guys had that experience before? Uh, um, hopefully, you guys have before. Today, I'm going to share with you uh, my experience of uh, what I believe, at least, for my personally, uh, when I spiritually, spiritually look. Uh, go to the next picture for me, Kev. Can you guys find me in this picture? Okay, this is, uh, this is when I'm like Abby's, Abby's age. Okay, this is when I was in college. This is 2005. Can you guys find me? Okay, first row. Oh, this one. This one this right here. By the way, there's another person at our church who This is June right here. Uri Chunopa. Okay? Yeah, this is me and June. So this is how, how far we go, me and June. Okay, we knew each other for a long time. And I went to a place called Philippines. Any of you guys went there before? Okay, no, nobody. Okay, no problem. Um, it's very similar to Texas, weather-wise. Super humid. It's super hot. Um, and I was just not used to that kind of atmosphere. That was my first time, I think, going to a third world country. And I was just not used to it whatsoever. It was just really, really, really difficult. On top of that, you guys know, if you guys know me a little bit more, I really, really like, you guys know that, right? But I was stuck with, like, just all dudes. And none of them, like, cooked well. Like, okay, no joke. They messed up even lamyan. Okay? Like, if you mess up making lamyan, you're just not a good cut. So I just remember when I went to the Philippines, I, I just could not get used to the weather. Uh, during that time, nowadays I think uh, people just go for about, a, about one month. I think we were there for about two months as well. So it was just very, very difficult situation for me. I, I was just like a spoiled kid, never went to a third world country before, and I was just not having a very good time until the weekends would come around because okay so philippines very interesting if you uh i know you guys haven't been there but it's very interesting because uh like right here this looks really nice but like surrounding the mall area it's like very 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 like, so the contrast is really it's like third world and then first world, like, it, like immediate contrast. Anyways, I really liked going to we would rest, but the best thing about SMO is they had air condition. Okay, so that, that was like the only place where I wasn't like profusely like just sweating out. Okay. Food was not very good, but here, I could actually eat like decent food. 
Okay, so I'm having, I'm having a blast on the weekends because I get to be in AC for a couple of hours. I get to eat whatever I want. I get to buy whatever I want. Oh, on top of that, they also had uh, internet. They had PC bang. Okay, where again during the mission field, I, I didn't have any of that. So again, I was not a good missionary, but uh, I really, really enjoyed uh, going here every weekend. One of the weekends. Uh, this is where I spiritually woke, okay, coming back. Um, I did everything. I enjoyed everything I wanted to enjoy. And I came out, and while I came out, we're going back home, I saw two kids. Okay. I think they're like, sorry, what's the, what's the, what's her name? Abby. Abby. No, not, is that Abby? Hi, Abby. I think it was like Abby's, like the, there's two kids, okay, we, there was a sister and a brother, and yeah, I think it was Abby, like Abby's age, and I think, oh, I think more, more uh, Yuna and Yumin's age right there, okay? And they were sleeping, uh, like next to like one of the, uh, the building wall right here, and they had a little can in front of them. So that indicated to me, oh, most likely uh, they're homeless kids. And for some reason, you knew that? <laughs> okay, he's, a, he's like, I knew those kids were homeless. Okay. Um, and for some reason, I don't know if you guys seen like movies before where like people are kind of like passing by, like it's like, shoo, shoo, like slow motion passing by, but like you see clearly like those two kids. It was kind of like a movie scene for me. All of a sudden, like just everything kind of like slowed down, like zoom, zoom. But I saw these like two kids like sleeping just on the ground. And I remember, like, I didn't really know what to do. I was just so shocked. I mean, I, you know, I've seen homeless people before. I've seen, you know, homeless kids on TV. But just something, just seeing those two kids there, it just kind of like, like, whoa, what's going on? Um, after that, I didn't really know what to do, and they were like, what are you doing? Like, because I stopped. And they were like, let's go, let's go, what are you doing? And so, like, I was like, I didn't really know what to do. So I, I looked around, like, my pocket, I had some coins in there, and I gave them, I, I put some coins, and then I left. Now, um, I was thinking on the way back home about this, what really happened to me, and one other thing really struck, which was, okay, I came across the world uh, as a Christian so-called missionary because like uh, the Cayenne program was like a mission program like three months program kind of thing and I thought like okay when I was inside here did I hesitate when I wanted to like buy stuff absolutely not did I hesitate when I like wanted to buy that clothes or buy that book or buy that chicken Absolutely not. But when I came out and I, I had a chance to help, I, I don't know, I'm not saying like I should have picked them up and like brought them to America, I don't know. But, uh, but I hesitated. Like there was something within me, I'm like, ah, oh, like do I really help them? Like should I help them? What if they're, you know what I mean? So I think for the first time in my heart, what I found was selfishness for the first time. I mean, of course, if people ask me, I, I was in college back at this time. Of course, my friends have told me I'm selfish, or my parents have told me, like, oh, you have character flaws. But, you know, you know, like, people could tell you stuff. But again, when you're woke to something, when you realize something, that's a totally different thing. But for the first time in my heart, I saw something evil within me, which is, oh, I can do for myself. I have zero hesitation. I could feed myself. I could do myself everything. But even for these little kids that, I don't know why they're there, but I'm not willing to do very much. If anything, I'm, I'm willing to do very little for these kids. So for the first time, at least in my life, okay, for me, first time for me in my life, I saw selfishness, or the Bible calls it sin or evil, whatever, whatever phrase you want to call it. I just saw something within me. And that really, really shocked me. Because I thought, you know, for me growing up, I grew up at the church. 
And I thought, hey, as long as you go to church, and I was even, hey, I wasn't even church. I played guitar in the front. I was church. I was leading out, and I was a church leader. Okay, so I was a good kid going to church. I did praise. I played guitar. I helped out the church. Hey, I never did drugs. No premarital sex. I'm, I, I'm good. I'm good. Everything's good, right? And I thought. So I thought, hey, I'm fine. Like. As long as I'm a this I'm a good person I'm I'm doing good like everything is all right but again for the first time I saw there's something going on in my heart so this is when I realized just because you say you're a Christian doesn't mean you're a Christian just because I, any anybody could I anybody could say I'm a Christian but that doesn't mean that you're a Christian or just because I go to church on Saturday and sing songs and listen to a sermon, again, that doesn't mean that you're a Christian. I realized that for myself during that time, for the first time. Because again, before I thought Christianity meant you go to church, you're a good kid, and that's it. But what I realized is, wait, is that it? Is, is, that, is that all there is to Christianity? Why is it that my Christianity, I thought I was a Christian, why is it that my Christianity can't even help other people? Why is it that my Christianity doesn't help me with my selfishness? Does that make sense? So for me at least, I realize, wow, I have an issue. Okay? So around that, another time, sorry with uh, technical difficulties, we'll just turn it off. Tell me when you guys are ready, okay? Um, around this time, I was reading a book. I was reading a book in, in the Philippines, and the book was called What's So Amazing About Grace? Uh, if you guys have a chance to read it, it's a very, very good book. It's by Philip Yancey. Anyways, um, in the book, he tells a story of a prostitute. Okay? Um... She started because she had drug issues. And after a while, she couldn't support herself uh, with the, uh, with the uh, job that she had. She could, she, it wasn't, it wasn't um, supporting her addiction. So what happens? So she starts uh, selling her body because that's easier money, that's better money. Uh, but that still didn't um, support her addiction. So what she started to do was to sell her kids. She, she, she understands, she, she knows she's a total failure in life. She has totally failed as, not just as a mother, but as a human being. And she's talking to a pastor, because a pastor found her. Crying. She failed. Is like so distraught hearing this. She's like, I don't want, you know, and, and, and this is what he said. The pastor said, why didn't you come to church? Like, why didn't you come to church to get help? It's good? Like, why, why didn't you come to church for help? We could have helped you. Before you, you, you know, you got to the situation, we could have helped you. And this is what she said. She said, church? Why would I go to church? They would only make me feel worse. Does that make sense? And so what, what the author was trying to say is, why is it that during Jesus' time, prostitutes actually came to Jesus and were comfortable? People who are lowly class, people who are so-called sinners, the bad, the evil people in the world, those people actually came to Jesus. But why is it that today in our churches, that those people would be like, heck no, I'm never going there. They're only going to make me feel worse. Wait. So the author was saying, if Jesus were to come into our church, so let's say our church, my, even my church, would he say, oh, this is my church. Like you guys are doing exactly what I want you guys to do. Okay. Do I have that confidence? 
that Jesus would come in here and say, you guys are doing a great job. You guys are doing exactly what I want you to do. And during that time, I realized I cannot say yes. And that bothered me again. Why? Because again, I realized just because we say we're a church and we have sign out there, you know, Dallas Central, Seventh-day Adventist, just because we have those signs, just because we have those things, doesn't mean that we're a church. Again, you guys understand that. But for me, it's just like, boom, it shocked me. Right? That makes sense, right? Just because, like, for example, let's say I wear, I wear a firefighter outfit. Am I a firefighter all of a sudden? No? Okay, well, let's, go out, let's say I go outside and, uh, like, grab a hose and start, like, spraying people. Am I, am I a firefighter? No. Okay. So just because, okay, I'm not, I'm talking about me right here. Just because I say I'm a Christian, just because I go to a church, and we say we're a church, and we sing songs to God, it doesn't mean that we're actually a church or a Christian, I realize. Next slide. So these Bible verses started to actually make sense now. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but only the ones who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. What? Not everyone who says, wait, but when they say Lord, Lord, that means they're saying, I know you, I know you. Like, I, these are things I have done. Well, let's continue on. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name? So they're, doing, they're religious people. In your name, do we not drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? So I've done things for you, God. I've done it in your name. But God says, I will tell you plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Oh, so it is possible to have a facade or act religious, but that doesn't mean that you actually really know God. Huh. Never thought about it like that. Okay. Are you guys waking up a little bit? Next verse. Here's another one. This one, this one is pretty bad too. Hear the word of the Lord. This is from Isaiah. You rulers of Sodom, listen to the instructions of our Lord, you people of Gomorrah. By the way, Sodom and Gomorrah, they're already destroyed. But he's saying you guys are similar to Sodom and Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifice. A lot of non-Christians actually realize this as well. This is what he said. I might believe in the Redeemer, Jesus, if his followers looked more redeemed. You redeemed don't look like you've been redeemed. You don't look anything like Jesus. You're just as fearful, guilt-ridden, anxious, confused, and adrift in an alien environment as I am. I'm allowed to be fearful, guilt-ridden, anxious, and confused. Why? Because I don't believe. I don't believe in afterlife. I don't believe in ultimate meaning. Right? So I, I should be fearful. Did I write it down here? I did. But you people claim you have a savior. Why don't you look like you are saved? Does that make sense? Okay. So I realize it's not just me. Believe in God, they, they see it too. Oh, wow. You guys are a bunch of fakes. And that's why there's no point of Christianity. Because if we we're just going to come and just sing songs and do all of this stuff, but our lives are no different, then what's the point? Okay. I hope so. Well, if it doesn't, if this doesn't make you uncomfortable, you're either not a Christian. Uh, you should, if anything, you're like keep going. Christians suck. Or, like, you really don't care. Then again, that's a bigger problem. You should be uncomfortable if you say you're a Christian and you follow God. This should bother you. 
Now, why are we here then? Okay, so or why am I even here? Okay, uh, clearly, uh, I don't have a lot of good things to think about uh, church. It seems like, okay, but why am I here? Okay, uh, I'm here. I actually believe, even though me as a Christian, I'm very messed up, and. Maybe as a church, I don't know about specifically this church, I just came here, but church as a, at least the churches I've been to are very messy and we're not really, you know, we're playing, playing church a lot of times. I mean, that offer to this world. What I'm trying to say is, just because there's a bad representation of Christianity, just because there's a bad representation of church, doesn't mean that Christianity is broken. The followers might be broken. The group of people at the church might be broken. But God and Christianity is actually really, really, really beautiful. And that's why I'm here. It's very easy. If we actually do this the right way, it's actually really, really, really. Let me give you guys some examples. But let me tell you, even about four years ago, I stopped believing in church. Well, actually, from uh, 2005, like I am, when after that happened and I came back to church and I tried to like, tell them, hey, we need to help the poor and this kind of stuff, and they're just like, I don't care. Um, I just became very disenchanted and I stopped. I, I, I just did not believe in the church. Okay? But for a long time, I didn't believe in the church. For maybe five, seven years, eight years, I just, I tried looking for something, but I just couldn't. Anyways, long story short, long story short. Um, I realized that, again, apply and actually obey and actually do things the way God wanted us to live our lives and do things, then there's actually transformation that could happen. And if we actually as a church become a community that the way that God wanted us to actually do community and church, then it's really, really beautiful, I realize. Again, uh, at my previous church, again, by no means was it perfect. Because we're all imperfect people and so because of that there's going to be imperfection but I for the first time actually started to see how powerful the message of Jesus was I'll give you some examples okay but if you guys want I could give like I could talk for a very very long time if you guys want to so if you want more then come and talk to me the biggest thing, I'm just going to kind of generalize it, okay? But I'm going to give you guys specific examples too. But the biggest thing is that all of us, all human beings, we all walk around with a vacuum. Okay, what I mean by that is like, we all feel the sense of something lacking. Okay, this is all human being, every single human being. And we're always, we're all grinding in some ways. We're all trying to achieve something or do something be somebody be approved by someone look a certain way every single one of us unless you tried all of that and you're just jaded with the world now you're just like no forget it the desires that I have I can't achieve it and so, there's two types of people. Either you're saying, if I just get this thing, if I just have that person, or if I just make this amount of money, or if I have this kind of car, or house, or kids, or wife, status, then I'm going to be filled then. Or, you tried all of that. Maybe you've actually achieved it. 
Maybe you got to the pinnacle and you still realize you're still empty. Kind of like a lot of these athletes, if you actually uh, uh, read their interviews or their stories after they win Super Bowl or NBA, a lot of them say this kind of things, which is, I got to the top. I thought that, that would be it. That would be great. But I wake up next morning thinking, why do I feel so empty? So you start feeling that emptiness, and what happens is you just go, oh, that's just the way it is. No fulfillment. Right? There's just... Then you just become jaded. You just become, you, does that make sense? You just become like, that, that's just the world. That's just the way it is. I, there's no good, there's no fulfillment, real, real fulfillment. So all of us have this emptiness, all of us. We're either striving for this continually, especially young people, young adults. I love it because they're always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then older people, they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my kids, yo, great, I love my kids. And that, that's kind of like, but they're like their dreams and their ambitions and their desires, they're just kind of like, whatever. But you know what's crazy is that Christianity or God actually can fulfill that emptiness within your heart. It's crazy that God can actually do that. So remember I said uh, our heart is a vacuum? It's always empty, right? So where was I like, going to other people? And it's like, give me love, give me security, give me this, give me that. But we're always running off empty. But once God comes into your life and you operate, then there's that deep, deep, deep. Word. And I've, I've seen this so many times happening at my previous church. And so I, I came up with a, fa- uh, a phrase just for myself. I call this, um, I call this uh, where did I put it, deep uh, uh, soul rest. So after, like, after I counsel people, after I help them realize, like, hey, there is God who can fulfill this deep emptiness that you have, whether you're still striving or whether you're so jaded in life, when they start to really like get it and wake up and see that there is something that could fulfill them, it's like there's that like a deep like sigh that happens, like deep like ah, like rest that happens. Like I, I, I see it. Right? Like they're like shoulders and they're just so much more relaxed. Why? Because they're not, they're not having to vacu- vacuum and say, I want more, I need more, I need more. They could just say, oh wow, for the first time in my life, I feel satisfied. I feel full. There's a longing within me and that's actually filled. It's kind of like a fish that was out of water. It's like we're just flapping outside and we're like, oh, it's so hot. It's like, I got to try harder. But imagine if you get that fish and put it in the water. It's like, imagine how refreshing that would be. Why? Because the fish is meant for water. And Jesus actually offers that to each and every one of us. Because you see, Christianity doesn't sugarcoat things. It doesn't just say, you know what? You have problems? Just love yourself. Okay, or, you know what, you have problems, just meditate it away. Okay, you know, just dig a hole and put your problems in there and just go. No, it doesn't do that. It actually says, okay, you have to deal with these problems. There's a reason why these problems occur. But, but do not fear at the same time. Because there's actually solutions to your issues. So, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely And harsh sometimes, and yet at the same time, when you when you actually, it's so hopeful. Full at the same time, and that is what Christianity really gives each and every one of us. And that's why, again, I'm here at the church. I'm here as a pastor. Why? Because I truly believe. Okay, we have. I have the best product. 
I have the best product, which is Jesus. This is the greatest solution ever. This is the greatest problem solver. Again, some of you guys are like, okay, of course you're a pastor, you're saying this. But trust me, if I, if I didn't believe, I have a lot of other things I could be doing. If I didn't believe this, I would not be here. Now, why am I talking about all of this? It's because we have to understand this is why we can't play Christianity. This is why we can't play church. We got to be very serious about our Christianity. We got to be very serious about the way we do church. Why? Because again, we have such a great product. Imagine there was a company, maybe beginning of COVID when it happened. Imagine if they actually came out with the You know what? Okay. You get it, you get it, you get it. And everybody, oh, they're getting better. But let's just say they say, oh, but man, just so nice. Like, everybody's vaccinated here. You know, we could be together. And those other people, like, we got to actually go out and tell people about vaccine. Like, we got to actually go outside. That's kind of uncomfortable. Like people don't like shots. It's going to hurt them. Like, let's just, let's just keep it for ourselves. You know, let's just keep it for ourselves. What would you say if you heard that a company did that? You say, you guys are horrible people. Either you really don't believe in this project or you guys are the most selfish people in the world. You see, again, this is why. Because I believe we have the greatest product. We just need to get our acts together. And when I mean we, I mean me too. Me. Me. I need to get my act together. I need to be really serious about this. Because this can save people's life. This can transform people's life. Do we have do we have slide? Let's try. If you go to the next slide. Okay. So let me end with everything with this. We're going to do something called discovery. Okay. The reason why it's called discovery is because we're not going to create what we're going to do. We're not going to create, oh, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think church is? Or what do you think Christianity means? Or what do you think? following Jesus means. No, we're not going to create stuff. Instead, we're going to discover together. Okay. Let's look at the Bible. Okay, what does Jesus say he wants us to do as followers? Okay, what does it mean to be Christian? So, these are some of the questions that we're going to discover together. What's the main message of Jesus? Like what what are we doing? Next. What does it mean to be a disciple? What does it mean to follow Jesus? Does it just mean come to church on once, one week, uh, once a week, one hour, just listen to a sermon and just go home and that's it? Is there more to that? Well, again, I could tell you all day, but let's see the Bible itself and let's discover it together. Next. What does it mean to be the church? Next. What is God calling our church specifically? What does he want us to do in Dallas? Next, what role will I specifically play, play as a disciple at this church? Again, these are the questions that we're going to go over together for our discovery. So this is a, really an invitation to all of you guys. It's not to make you guys feel guilty. Not at all. It's not to say, just wake up. No, not at all. But it's really to say, hey, we have, as Christians, we have the greatest product. Let's make sure that everybody hears about this. Let's do it the way that Jesus wants us to do it. It's an invitation to a journey together. Uh, specifically, what are we going to do? We're going to discuss our discovery uh, every Friday, 7.30, next. 
uh, there's going to be five different readings from the Bible. And then afterwards, uh, there's going to be journaling. So I, I will provide some questions. You're going to read the Bible verse. I'm going to provide you questions. And then you answer them. It'll take about 15, 20 minutes a day. Again, why are we doing this? Because I can stand here all day. Jesus said this, but it doesn't matter. You go, oh, nice sermon, and then you go the next day. But uh, again, unless you realize, oh, this is what it really is, then you're going you're gonna to be waking up as well. Okay, the information will be sent out via Kakao. Okay, we're going to start uh, this Friday. And then there will be also uh, prayer meetings and fastings that will happen as well. Okay, so this is what, where we're going as a church together. We just started in March, but this is where we're going. This is not just for adults. This is for everybody. If you can join, great. It's an invitation to discover together what does God really want us to do with this. We have a great, great Jesus who can save the whole world. Let me just uh, uh, read uh, Ellen White quote, and then we'll finish. The effort to bless others, to, you know, this good news to other people, will be a blessing upon ourselves. This was the purpose of God in giving us a part to act in the plan of redemption. He has granted men the privilege of becoming partakers of the divine nation and in their turn of diffusing blessings to their fellow men. Basically, same thing, okay? As you're blessing other people, as you're sharing this message to other people, you're going to be blessed. This is the highest honor, the greatest joy that is possible for God to bestow upon men. Those who thus become participants in labors of love and are brought nearest to their creator. I, I truly believe this. The greatest happiness I felt in my life is when, I, when, when I'm able to tell people about Jesus and they get it. And they feel that deep rest. Nothing, nothing is greater than that. No purchase I've made, okay? no uh, 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 great friendship or girlfriends, or love I had, nothing, nothing is greater than really sharing that message, this product, and them, them getting it, and them being fulfilled. Nothing greater. Okay, keep going. And this is the last slide. Oh, if you shall, if you will do the work as Christ designed, you will feel the need of a deeper experience and a greater knowledge in divine things. And will hunger and thirst, you will plead with God, and your faith will be strengthened, and your soul will drink deeper drafts at the well of salvation. You will grow in grace and the knowledge of Christ, and will develop a deep experience. If you want to grow spiritually, if you want to get closer to God, that's the only way. Right? You could, you could all day long, you could say, oh, you know, I, I came to church and I'm not growing. I don't get this Christianity thing. It's like saying, I went to the gym and I stood there and I'm not gaining muscles. I'm not losing weight. Well, you got to start exercising your muscles. Once again, I invite you, every single one of you, where, wherever you are in your journey of life, in your spiritual walk, we're going to discover together what it means to follow Jesus and to be his church. Uh, we're going to go into time of reflection, and after that, we'll have offering. Let's go into time of reflection.